Hi, this is Shadi, and today it's gonna be 1960s judo versus modern judo. We're gonna see the evolution of judo, but at the same time, what can we retrieve back from the past in order to not only stay as close as possible to the roots, but at the same time, evolve judo. Judo is very dynamic throwing with high expectation and high criteria to scoring in my opinion. At the same time, great transitions into Neiwaza, of course, the code of conduct, the respect, um, the philosophy, all these should always be maintained. And at the same time, there's the athleticism and just overall safe practice that should always be kept in mind and for a good reason. So let's first start with the prohibited acts of 1961 IJF rules. Here you can pause and click the link in the description if you want to just take your time and read it. You would see your obvious ones like your Kawazugake, your Dojime, uh, spine locks and uh, any Kansetsuwaza aside from the arms. So the, the wrist, of course, the legs, the knee, uh, the spine, as I mentioned earlier, and the gripping of the scissors on the body. So I was a bit surprised to see that Kawazugake was actually uh, prohibited well before Kani Basami because it might seem more dangerous than Kawazugake, just the amount of ripped knees, uh, especially in your open weight categories like All Japan, you see bigger guy tempting it on someone like Koga which is terrifying of course here is your Dojime um, you're gonna see from the 1961 world championship which was only um, open weight category so a guy who's 80 kilogram getting caught in a Dojime of a guy who is 140 is not gonna end well and even today in Japan no weight category is still a thing so this technique can be very well dangerous so Let's continue a little bit with the prohibited acts. You can pause and read, but you can see stuff like you see today, gripping only on one side, trying to break the grips with your legs and kicking them, uh, stepping on your opponent, uh, and many others. Now, when it comes to the scoring, I would say uh, back then it was far harder to score. For example, you had only Wazari and Ippon, just like today. But um, if you take a look at the archive of the throws, a lot of what today scores Ippon, it was only Wazari back then, and Ippon should have been very firm and clear Ippon, not driving or rolling, and the Wazari is something that's very close to Ippon, as well as the pinning. The pinning was 25, more than 25 seconds, it's Ippon, and if you have a Wazari, you need to pin for 25 seconds, so it's even harder than today. So. Here, let's take a look at the 1961 World Championship. Obviously, the size difference is very apparent, which will make the game look far more passive than today. Uh, but that's not necessarily true, because when you have uh, your open weight category, um, one against a very smaller one, you're going to see a reach, you're going to see just... Uh, sheer domination by the gripping only and keeping them at bay, not necessarily uh, being explosive and fainting and doing all these things like you would see in the featherweight, the lightweight, uh, middleweight. Uh, I'm gonna show you middleweight action a little bit, but here I'm just trying to show you that it might look very passive back then compared to today, but that's only because of the fact that it was only an open weight uh, championship but open weight championship have a lot to offer us even today and i'm gonna get to them in a little bit it's always nice to see a little guy fighting greatly like this like you'd see toshi kokoga in the past he this man this man here against portugal he's blocking the uchimata greatly so um going for ashiwaza framing with the gripping and this is stuff that even today that we want to see. So uh, here the Ashiharai attempt. Obviously, you're gonna need far more skills to topple a giant, and we're gonna see that soon in recent years. Great Ippon, um, just over the rotates him, but still the control, the the power, etc. It is meriting of an Ippon. So here, let's take a look at the middleweight Olympic champion Isao Okano of 1964. Here you can see a lot of the stuff that you would see today, but even back then, like the commitment to the Ippon, the standing Seonage, very reminiscent of Hifumi Abe, or reminding us of Hifumi Abe because this happened earlier. So 
the commitment to the ippon and uh, the technique, the gripping, the firm gripping. Here you see the Abe siblings. A lot of people, uh, I would say, talk about this particular aspect, how they're committed to the ippon, their sheer strength, and just overall brutal domination. Isao Okano was doing that in the 60s. Um, but there's, let's also talk about the Neiwaza transitions because a lot of people think today, you know, with Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and all sorts of, you know, Neiwaza evolution, that only now uh, Neiwaza has become, at least on the Olympic and IJF circuit, I'm not talking about the Kimura days or the Tunitani Oda, I'm talking about the IJF circuit. Because athletes are training Jiu Jitsu, now you have more Neiwaza, which is not true at all again. So, here, this is a very beautiful Ippon from the Standing Sionage. Now, let's take a look at Isao Okano's transitions into Neiwaza, which can be very brutal even by today's standards. So, a lot of people don't know this, but Isao Okano has contributed a lot to the game of Jiu Jitsu and Neiwaza. So, here you see that Kosoto feint uh, into uh, Tanya Otoshi that you see today. Even back then, it was very famous and explosive. Great guard passing into Osai Komi. Uh, now, let's take a look at a very brutal Shimewaza. This is a great sail into Kochi Feint. Again, Hifumi Abe against Garikos does the same thing. Brilliant Wazari. Let's take a look at this brutal Shimewaza. So, here he gets the lapel around the neck and rotates. It might seem like he is being caught in a Kamishio Gatame, but in fact, look at the strangle, it's being applied, rotates and puts him on his back and puts him to sleep. Absolutely brutal. So, very basic, but very effective and very brutal. Now, when it comes to today's Judo, I would say Neiwaza is far more versatile with the evolution of the ground game. Of course, people paying attention to Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, as I mentioned earlier. Here you see attack of the turtle are far more effective. Um, a lot of people think that you have only limited seconds on the ground. That's not true. If the Neiwaza game is progressing, as you are seeing here, the referee will sit and allow it. Um, but if it's just showing bad Neiwaza and it's not going anywhere, of course it's going to be blocked because Judo is a dynamic game. Here you see the housing roll still being applied today. Jessica Klimkate has mastered it. You also have uh, many others who have great transitions into Neiwaza, but I'm just showing you the versatility of today's Neiwaza. Um, but nonetheless, the past Neiwaza was also very nice and very good. Just take a look at Masahiko Kimura against Elio Gracie. Now, when it comes to the uh, open weight, like I said, it might seem very passive and you're gripping here. It looks like you know, you're two guys fighting in a dojo, doing randori together. This entry of Uchimata, again, it's... What I would say, today's judo, or in the last three decades or so, the evolution of the heavyweights has evolved tremendously. And you see guys flying and flipping. You know, Kose in the minus 100, and even in the plus 100, has performed magic. He made them look like they were 73 kilogram guys. Here you see, like, the passivity of you know the heavy guys gripping and you can clearly see that the gripping of today has evolved just by comparing it to this so that's one thing that today's judo has clearly uh, mastered you have so many styles of gripping and so many uh, options and it makes it look a lot of fun so here this great example, like the magic of the heavyweights you see performed by the Japanese blast against Katabuchi, this Uchima Taskashi that's coming here. Just only, just brilliantly done. I have no words to describe it. Katabuchi's gripping avoided him getting dominated by an Uchimata. Look at the size difference, look at the weight difference, and yet flipped him on his back and here you know Kose transitioning into the plus 100 in 2007 Paris tournament and with the gripping keeping someone at bay and keeping someone guessing and unbalancing them here against Zegara of Peru constantly moving fighting for the grips destabilizing with Ashiwaza and finally when he gets his grips performs 
an astonishing Uchimata. That's the stuff that you would not see back in the day with the heavyweights. So, open weight category, in my opinion, should still be an option because the gripping will evolve, the throwing will evolve, and the whole art will evolve. And also, this is what judo is about through technique, positioning, timing, taking down someone who's stronger and bigger. That was the whole goal. So now the, sh the strength have evolved tremendously with exercise science. This type of monstrosity when it comes to throwing, you would not see so much back in the day. But with exercise science, a lot of guys are looking like bodybuilders. The strength has increased. Uh, but again, open weight category should be always an option we always want to see stuff like this you know we could say toppling a giant but i don't know why they decided to remove it it was still present up until the 2000s so suzuki inoue and many others participated in it and they did miracles so uh, and again this is what judo is about uh, even in japan today the all japan was a spectacle here is a mixed team high school students i believe there are no weight categories it should always be an option here this uchima taskashi against a far larger opponent again it's magic to see this when someone outsmarting someone positioning themselves with technique uh, not relying on their strength and not relying on their size so if i were to take a few things from the 1960s it would be the following the criteria for throwing and pinning um, a lot of stuff in recent years have made no sense. For example, the when someone fails at a throw and you roll them over onto their back, not even throwing them, that used to be a wazari is just ridiculous and I'm so glad they got rid of it. Um, the criteria of wazari should be far more difficult to, to obtain. Landing on your elbows, uh, getting a shido and the other gets a wazari is ridiculous. You want to give them a shido, please go ahead. For safety reasons, I get it. But um, when they removed yuko, a lot of uh, they said the yuko throws are now wazari, and that should not be the case. So either restore yuko or make a wazari f very hard to get. And also, the pinning maybe 15 seconds for a wazari or 15 seconds and more for a wazari and 25 for a pawn, just like the old Japan. That's good because you give them a fighting chance. A lot of people don't know this, but with the explosiveness of the stand-up, once you get to the ground and having someone on you, it's not very easy. That's why a lot of them just give up because with the explosiveness of the stand-up, the cardio, etc., getting to the ground suddenly and having to fight for a pin, it's very taxing. Uh, it's not just like starting on your knees or like doing BJJ. So maybe make the criteria as far difficult in the pinning and in the throwing that's one and this will automatically evolve the the game so rolling stuff and driving uh, should not be a pawn at all maybe if there's clear control and you land them flat on their back after some driving and after uh, a fast rolling immediately then give them a wazari maximum but a pawn should always be planting someone firm with decisiveness and strength and quickness it's not driving the length of the mat and then doing a crocodile roll none of that also falling on your butt and getting rolled over scoring wazari is ridiculous so either you bring back yuko like in 2016 or in like the old japan you see uh, in today's judo or make the criteria as far difficult for wazari and ippon and i understand that they want to differentiate from sambo and you know point scoring because you know you're scoring all these yukos and then a wasari and then you have all these things it makes it look like point scoring or people stalling uh, make it so that it's hard to th to score but at the same time it's that do or die mentality but it won't be judo without open weight category that's my honest opinion open weight category is what makes judo judo you have someone who's technically superior, far smarter and more strategic, throwing bigger men or bigger women. And that what makes judo judo. So getting rid of open weight category, in my opinion, it's not a good thing and it should be brought back and it will evolve the gripping. It will evolve the dynamism of judo because you're fighting a bigger guy. Obviously, you're going to be working on your gripping and your framing and your positioning. So if you have anything else to add, please let me know down below. 
This was Shady, and thank you for listening.